This is Butler on Business, your home for economics from a free market perspective. Welcome back, and joining us now, I am honored to tell you, is Barry Goldwater, Jr. You may recognize the name. His father ran for president in 1964. He was a longtime senator from the state of Arizona. Barry, it's an honor to have you, guy. Well, thank you, Alan. It's nice to be with you. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I really am honored to have you. I was 10 years old when your father ran for president, but I can remember clearly AUH2O. <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? Well, it was, yeah. and just so you'll know, I, uh, my dad was a Goldwater supporter back in 1964, so even though I was 10 years old, we were for Goldwater. Well, we... Uh... You know, my, my father kind of started and, and defined what a conservative was, and uh, it's uh, that definition is still alive of limited government and uh, less taxes and more freedom and personal responsibility and strong defense. Those core values that he established as uh, the definition of a conservative are still alive and well today. Well, well Barry, if it's all right if I call you Barry... Absolutely. That's my name. Uh, all right. Well, as I mentioned to you right before we came on the air, I have a good friend of mine that lives out in Arizona, and you apparently wrote a plug for his book, Red and Blue and Broke All Over, Charles Goyette. Yeah, Charles is a, um, a good spokesman uh, for freedom and liberty, and uh, he uh, has written some good books and is, uh, is a good man. Well, I like Charles. There was an interview that Charles, and Charles comes on and does a half hour every Tuesday on my show, and we've gotten to be pretty good friends that way. And one day he was having to get off uh, with me to do his Ron Paul's America, and we were joking around, and I accused him of being a name dropper. And then so I, I told him when I was interviewing Adelaide Stevenson, well, I was talking about Adelaide Stevenson the third. But Charles thought I was talking about the Adlai Stevenson that ran with Abraham Lincoln, and it took me about five minutes to get Charles to quit laughing. So I gave him a heads up. I said, hey, I'm going to be interviewing Barry Goldwater on Friday. And, and then I said, Junior. And then that's when I got uh, two pictures of you and, and uh, Charles and Charles's huh. wife together. And then he sent me the kind words you wrote about his book. Oh, well, yeah, he's a good man. Charles is a good man. Well, Barry, what's it like growing up with a famous father? Well, it's hard to describe. I mean, I've, I've, I've had this all my life, and uh, I don't think too much about it. Obviously, uh, there's you live in kind of a fishbowl. Um, people know what you do and when you do it, and you kind of get used to that. Um, it was uh, actually, looking back on it, it was uh, very rewarding because my father, um, he, 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 uh, he was a father by example, and uh, he wasn't one that sat there and lectured you all day. He, his lifestyle, his life, his philosophy uh, was one that, um, you know, I just sat there in front of me my whole life, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it, it it's been a... It's been a good life. Well, I was talking to a buddy of mine, a fellow talk show host whose father uh, was a, a liberal, but he said that when, and they were from Arizona, and he said that when he had uh, asked him years ago about Barry Goldwater, even though the dad was a lefty and, and didn't agree with your father ideologically, the first thing he said was he was an honest man. Yeah. Well, my father, uh, you know, he was, and he, and he was pretty straightforward. He he said what he what he believed, and uh, people respected that. And on top of that, he was uh, people liked him. He was a, a decent guy. He was honest. He was, you know, there was what you what you saw is what you got. Well, it's my understanding when your dad went in and told uh, President Nixon that he would vote to impeach him, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, and Nixon decided to resign once he lost Goldwater. Well, I'm not sure that's all, but uh, 
you know, it was a, a cataclysmic of events that unfolded that shouldn't have unfolded the way it did. If, if the president would have just come forward and said this this thing happened and uh, we're going to take care of it, and uh, but uh, that's not the way it happened. And unfortunately, he wound up having to leave office. I don't know if it was just my father, but uh, uh, there was Senator Scott and uh, Congressman Rhodes also was in the, on that meeting. Well, you know, looking back on how things developed with Johnson having won that race, you'd have to think, had your dad been our president, we would be looking at an entirely different America than the one we have today, one that would be, in my opinion, far greater a nation than the one we've got now. Well, I think it probably would be. Um, I, we've, we've watched watched our country move uh, from freedom to uh, to one of uh, dependency and uh, and uh, the, the conservative believes that we need to help people who are less fortunate and who uh, unfortunately get thrown out of the economic uh, uh, situation uh, and we help them get back on their feet. Unfortunately we've gotten to where uh, this this uh, safety net has become a way of life. And uh, you have those who are working and paying taxes that uh, wind up supporting those that are not working and not paying taxes. And at some point in time, uh, the workers are going to say, hey, I want on that gravy train, and they're going to stop working. we got to be careful what we're doing here, and uh, we need to step back and take a hard look at government and what kind of government do we want. Your dad was very close, I believe, to President uh, Reagan, G Governor Reagan at the time. Did, did you ever get to spend much time with President Reagan? Well, I, I did. I knew him, um, I knew him when, he was, when he was governor, and, um, and uh, of course, when he was president, I was in Congress at the time. Um, and, yeah, I got to know him quite well, him and his, and his wife, Nancy. Your dad, did he face the sort of internal opposition to his candidacy that President Reagan did from the establishment of the GOP at the time? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was a, it was a real struggle. Back in the 60s, the Republican Party was dominated by the liberal, eastern liberal establishment of the Rockefellers and the Scrantons and, and the Romneys uh, that uh, controlled the party at the time. And the 1964 convention was the uh, dividing line where the conservatives took the party over. But it was not an easy uh, thing to do, and it was a, it was a struggle. Uh, and the same thing that was going on today, as you see going on back in those days. What do you think of the status of the Republican Party now? I personally just spend all of my time bordering somewhere between disgusted and aggravated. Well, we definitely are in desperate need of leadership. I think we have some good young people coming up uh, in the governor's area and some of our senators and congressmen. I think the future looks okay. We just got to stick to our core value and, and not be afraid of it. Uh, you, you can't out give away the Democrats, so you might as well stand for something. And I think the Republican Party should stand for freedom and opportunity and entrepreneurial uh, uh, activity. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a classic struggle that's dominated our culture. Uh, for many, many years. It's John Maynard Keynes versus Milton Friedman, uh, New York Times versus the Wall Street Journal, the right versus the left, the conservative versus the liberal, MSNBC versus Fox, Republican versus Democrat. That's, that's a fight that's been going on for a long, long time, and it will continue to go on. But I think the Republican Party uh, will do well if we, if we cultivate these new young people like uh, Colonel uh, 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 graves, and uh, if uh, if we stick to our guns and not compromise, we I think we're going to be okay. 
Do you like the current crop, the newly elected crop? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, I think they're good people. No, we've got some good people, and uh, that's uh, we're going to have to look to them for, for our guidance and, uh, and our future. And so I'm, I'm optimistic. I don't think we need to give in. Uh, we need to stick to our guns and, and try to do a better job of selling uh, what's good for America. Unfortunately, we have lost a couple of good ones. Senator Jim DeMint, as you know, has gone to head the Heritage Foundation, and then uh, Congressman Paul, Dr. Ron Paul. Well, we did, but uh, their legacy still exists. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they've set a high standard for us, and uh, we have some new ones that have stepped in and taken their place. Weren't you an early supporter of uh, Dr. Paul's? Oh, uh, yeah, Ron Paul and I served together and um, in the uh, House of Representatives. I supported him every time he ran for president. In fact, he and I were on the same ballot in Louisiana for president and vice president. We came in third. What do you think of the modern-day libertarian movement? What, what would your message be to libertarians? Because, you know, a lot of the libertarians look at your father's messaging, and while your dad is identified as being basically the catalyst behind the modern-day conservative movement, much of his message was quite libertarian by today's standards. Oh, yeah, my, I would call my father a libertarian. I, I, claim, I look upon myself um, as a as a libertarian, and uh, uh, I just think that the libertarians need to stick to their guns and, and, uh, and, and understand their philosophy of limited government and, and freedom, um, and I would just continue to do as we're doing now, and that's fight the battle. Well, I remember a message that was coming out of the establishment wing of the Republican Party. They didn't want the, the libertarians. I, too, am a libertarian, and I, I took some, somewhat of offense to not being wanted by the party with whom I should be most closely identified. Well, those, this kind of struggle, I guess, has always been around. Uh, and... Uh, the important thing is, is that you be consistent in uh, what you talk about. That you work hard to uh, persuade people that freedom will will do more for this country than uh, slavery. Um, you know, history walks with us today as as we do our work. Uh, history offers us not a single example of a nation that has ever spent, borrowed, or taxed its way to prosperity. But it offers us many, many examples of nations who have spent, borrowed, and taxed their way to economic ruin and bankruptcy. Who was it? Uh, Milton Friedman said one time that if the federal government were in charge of the Sahara Desert, in one year there would be no sand. So we got to understand what made this country great, why our forefathers came here, and that is for liberty, to get away from slavery, from uh, dominance of the crown, of, of totalitarian. You know, freedom in the history of, the, of mankind, freedom is very rare. And, uh, but the United States stands as a symbol of what man can do if he's free. Why, does that, why is the whole world trying to come to the United States? Individuals sneaking across our border. Uh, waiting in line at the embassies to get a uh, permit to come here. It's because here we can, you know, a man or a woman, a child can raise, rise up to anything they want. If they fall down, they, they have the freedom to get back up and work harder. Uh, so this, this country uh, is a symbol, and the conservatives and libertarians have a, have a good message. They need to do a better job in selling it. Well, I remember Senator DeMint, and he was senator at the time of the debate. The debate that should be taking place within the Republican Party should be between the conservatives, the libertarian, and the Tea Party crowd. And unfortunately, they have been pushed aside by the establishment, which, in my opinion, has been just totally an ep. Well, 
That's unfortunate what's going on today. Uh, you got to pick your fights uh, and fights that you stand a chance of winning. Well, you know, the, the thing that frustrates me about the current debate, right now the federal government is raking in more revenue than it ever has in the history of the republic, so the debate is really spending money, raising the debt ceiling to spend money we don't have. Well, you're absolutely right. And, uh, but, uh, uh, and, and, and you and I understand that, but uh, I'm not so sure this was the right fight to pick. What did you and then also your father think of, of the central bank, the Federal Reserve System? Well, uh, I think the uh, – I don't think that we would support a centralized monetary system that we have. Uh, and uh, they are – they have basically – caused a lot of the problems that we have today with their printing press mentality where we've devalued the the uh, the dollar and uh, we're in this problem that we are right now because of the Federal Reserve in my opinion uh, the Federal Reserve is not often talked about but uh, it has been very instrumental in undermining the strength of, of the United States economy and uh, there, there needs to be a reevaluation of its role in our economy. Well, you're preaching to the choir right there. In fact, I go on to blame them for, in large part for the loss of our <coughs> moral fabric because as a result of all this money printing they've been doing since they were created 100 years ago, we've gone from where one breadwinner worked and the other one stayed at home and raised the children to two breadwinners having to, to scrape and, and the kids are being raised in daycare centers. And I blame all that on the Federal Reserve. Well, that's, that's very true. Yeah. Well, right now that you're retired from Congress, but it seems that you're still somewhat active in getting some of the candidates that you support elected. How's that going? Well, I, I I was born into politics. It's in my blood. And even though I'm no longer in the United States Congress, I still try to uh, work for and behalf of and support these these, these good candidates. Uh, it's time, in my opinion, to recapture our commitment to the principles of free markets and private property and personal responsibility and limited government that made our nation great. Uh, as a self-identified libertarian, do you recommend that the libertarians stay inside the GOP and help take over the party from the establishment, or do you uh, accept and agree that they should move on over and form their own party? Well, I like the two-party system, and where there's been, where if we look historically, where there have been multiple parties, and you uh, you basically are governed by coalition. Uh, that's never worked very well. Uh, I believe that our message is is solid and is it's sound. It's um, it is um, it is basically uh, democratic capitalism is the world's greatest success story. Uh, there's no central planner. It's based on trust, and um, and uh, I think that we have a message and we ought to work hard within the party. And, um, and and make our voices heard loud and clear. I don't think splitting off and creating other parties is uh, a good uh, prescription for uh, this country or the, the libertarians. When Charles and I were, Charles Goyette and I were talking about this interview that you and I were going to do today, Charles said that if we had more fellows like you and your dad, there would be no need for a libertarian party. But I know many libertarians just um, have abandoned the GOP because right now with the establishment in, in charge, it's more of a left-leaning party that's hard to discern from the Democrats sometimes. Well, and that may be that may be true, but I think if we, uh, you know, in, in 2010, 
the Tea Party, so-called Tea Party, which are basically there's no there's no real Tea Party. There were individuals of like mind within the Republican Party that went out and worked hard, and we won the day. We we took over the uh, the House of Representatives. Uh, we need uh, good leaders who are going to stand up, uh, like Senator Cruz from Texas and uh, Ron, uh, Ron uh, not Ron Paul, but his son Rand Paul and Rubio from Florida. Uh, we need to have these people out there walking, uh, talking, and and setting the example. We can we did it in 2010. We can do it again. <laughs> Well, listen, you've been very generous with your time. I, Like I said, I was 10 when your dad r- ran for president, but uh, as I grew older and recognized what was on the line during that uh, presidential campaign in 1964, I, I just sincerely wish that he had been our president because I think today we would have a, a much freer nation. We'd have a smaller government, and we would... R- reign supreme economically instead of being mired into this great recession that we find ourselves in today. Well, I think you're absolutely right. Um, the, uh, the, this country, uh, we, we oftentimes do not stop and remember why it was founded and what principles uh, or the underlying thought at the time. Uh, those principles are still good today. And freedom is not free. Freedom requires all of us to get out and be involved. Um, and uh, I think uh, if we continue to talk about freedom and liberty and how this principle has uh, uh, created greater opportunities and have taken more people out of slavery, that uh, it is a message that... Uh, I think uh, makes a lot of sense and uh, uh, will take us down to the road of, 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 uh, of success and, and victory. Mr. Goldwater, thank you again very much for your time. We're speaking with Barry Goldwater, Jr., former congressman. I believe you were a congressman actually in California, weren't you? Yes, I represented the San Fernando Valley, northern uh, county of Los Angeles, for 14 years. And uh, I enjoyed uh, those 14 years serving. Well, you have a rich tradition, and you should be very proud of your father. Well, Alan, thank you for your time, and thank you for having me on. Well, it's a pleasure, and I hope that I can have you on again sometime soon, and it might be fun to get you, Charles, and I together at the same time for an interview. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.